Hi, I'm Kevin Lopez. I'm on the Azure Stack Global Black Belt team, and I'm joined here today with my teammate. Alton Kinahan, also on the Global Black Belt team. Thank you for having me. Thanks for coming, Alton. So today we're going to talk a little bit about the Azure Stack App Service Resource Provider. It's a mouthful. <laughs> um, and in specific, Alton, can you kind of guide us, you're going to know you're going to guide us through some of that, but can you also give us kind of a high level about all the past services that are on Azure Stack today, and you're going to drive us through then some demo and thing, right? Absolutely, be happy to. Okay. So Thank you. let's take a look at a couple of slides here, just better explain this. Okay. So with Azure Stack, we have you know, several resource providers available, and these are bringing what you know, PaaS, PaaS capabilities into the customer's data center. We have Azure App Service, Functions, Service Fabric, Azure Container Service, and Cloud Foundry. And um, today, we're obviously, we're, as you said, we're paying special attention to the app service resource provider. Um, but this is what's available with Stack today. Okay. More and more will come to Stack in the not too distant future. And um, we're just waiting to basically add scale, take customer feedback. The product group is listening very, clo very closely to all the customer's feedback around exactly what services are they requiring. So I'm a customer, I go to one of our OEMs, I purchased the Azure Stack, and these come on it today. So, great question, Kevin. Um, so, these do not come on it today. Ah, there we go. Yes. Okay. So, d what you get by default are just IaaS capabilities on the box. So, you have compute, network, storage, uh, stuff like that to actually stand up a re an in infrastructure as a service environment. Yeah, as a environment. Okay. We do not want to basically enforce that all customers will install all of these PaaS services or PaaS capabilities on their stack. A couple of different reasons. One, not everyone wants to use the same right, sets right, of services. Right. Yeah. And two, all of these take up space on your Azure stack. And of course, with constraints around the footprint of an Azure stack in today's world, you know, we want to be very you know, careful with that. So I get choices. You get choices. All you right. have complete flexibility. All right, excellent. Yep. So again, we're just focusing on the Azure app service, and so I just want to show or talk about a little bit about the actual resource provider itself. What is this thing? So as we just called out, not installed by default. Um, add only as you needed. Each one's going to consume approximately 60 gigabytes worth of space on your Azure Stack stamp. So uh, it's not a lot, but at the same time, you install multiple, mm -hmm. it's eating it up. And they all require Windows Server core images, and then uh, there's separate installation procedures and requirements for each one of these. Some are easier, some are more difficult, um, but you know, we have it all very well documented up on the Azure website as well. And for the app service one itself, I have a link right here that I can take you to, shows you, you know, what that looks like. So before you get started with the Azure app service, take a walk through this. There's a heavy, like, you know, a lot of requirements for certificates, virtual network requirements, file server, SQL. Okay. So, you know, lots of requirements that are uh, needed here to actually this make this. This is on the public site? This is on the Azure public site. Okay, yep. excellent. So, uh, all from the Azure documentation. Okay. So I guess from here, let me jump into the actual environment and uh, you know, show you what this looks like. All right. So bounce over to my environment here. So where I've come first is into the Azure Stack Administration Portal. And this is where you have to basically kind of like, you know, turn all the knobs, push all the buttons to make this thing kind of come to life. Um, the app service itself is going to be over here. Uh, obviously, it's not going to be in everyone's blade, but you can browse more services and find your app service itself. Now, all of these items here, you have to basically kind of walk through, configure, like, you know, how are you going to operationalize this thing. A lot of that is going to be surfaced also during the installation steps. You're going to define, as an example, how many worker tiers, how many, you know, management servers are going to be part of your app service installation. Okay. So that's part of the administrator role. It is. Okay. It is, absolutely. So, you know, going through here, so this just kind of gives you some properties, like what's, you know, what's working in here. I have a very minimal footprint here. I'm using just one worker, one publisher, one load balancer and controller. And then we can take a look at some of the system configuration. Tells me these are all the properties I defined as part of my installation procedure. So I say, you know, this is going to be my file share location, my DNS suffix, FTP, et cetera. So all the way down, and it brings you down here to the certificates that I defined also as part of the installation. Yeah, okay. Um, now I have an opportunity, oh, don't want to save that, just, okay, <laughs> discard. But 
we can take a look at our source control configuration. So if I'm using GitHub or Bitbucket or anything like that, I can put in the ID and the secrets here for each one of these as well as my repos. Okay. Okay. So I don't have anything defined in there at this point. Here I can take a look at what roles are part of my environment. So, you know, we al already seen a little bit of this up in the properties, but it's just kind of broken down nicer. So here's my management server, front end, web worker roles, etc., and different sizes. I can load my uh, SSL certificates in here, so virtual IP mappings back to you know, stuff internal inside my organization. Even use the IP block test if I wanted to block out subnets, etc. Worker tiers. Here I get to define like you know what are they going to be. So I have went with all the standard ones. I just have the small, medium, and large, but I also have shared. Shared is actually what I'm using. Okay. Just in order to take up as few resources on my Azure stack right now as possible. And then I can also define my SKUs in here. So I can add additional ones, but again, I'm just going with just a standard free share and standard for this environment. Pricing tiers, this is pretty cool. I can come in here, s define what are my tiers going to be. I even have the opportunity to come in here and actually insert pricing. So I could yeah. name like, you know, $3 per right. month or something like that. That's actually going to be represented back in the portal experience then for a consumer. It, they'll know exactly what they're going to be charged per month. So they get to see it, uh, what their consumption levels are going to be. That is correct. And plan for that accordingly. Exactly. Okay. Yep. And then subscription quotas. I don't want to save that again. But here I have a couple of quotas defined, and these be you know, saying, I'm only allowed to deploy X amount of websites or to, you know, use so much web services and uh, apply those quotas to my app service environment. Um, again, it's coming back to something that we spoke about previously, which was capacity mindset. Sure. Uh, so managing the amount of resources you have. And then even lastly, the custom software. You can inject some custom software in here if you needed to inject anything or offer it into um, any app service deployments as well. Oh, very nice. So when I'm uh, like a, a managed service provider, you know, I'm going to be planning all these things out for my tenants, or even if I'm just an administrator for a customer, then I need to know kind of what my people are looking for so that I can make sure that I'm matching their needs and then be able to do some bill back and exactly. you know, things of that nature. Exactly. Absolutely. Okay. So, yeah, a lot of customers that come to us want to talk about show back, charge back, and mm -hmm. stuff like that as well. Right. Some organizations can do it, some can't. So. You know, it's, it kind of fits all portfolios right there. Okay. Okay. Wonderful. So now that we have this environment up and running, like there's a couple of different ways we can approach using this, of course. We can come into the Azure Stack portal. Um, over here, you can this see I... This is the tenant, right? This is the tenant. Okay. Yep, exactly. So over here, I have one environment already stood up. But if I wanted to create a new one, all I have to do is come in, just browse through like I would up in Azure again, go to web and mobile. And now I have a whole list of things I could potentially deploy here. A lot of these offerings that we see on the screen as well, from DNN all the way down to WordPress and Orchard and Django, these are solutions that I've syndicated from the Azure Stack Marketplace and just made them available to my tenant. Uh, okay. Okay. And right. um, these ones up here, we have the web app and we have the API app and function app. Um, I'll call out function here is functions you actually get installed as part of the app service resource provider. So installing that, you get function capabilities as well for your serverless. Um, but with the web app, this will show up once you install that resource provider. I can come in, define a few properties here, and go ahead and deploy a new web application. At that point, I can hand that off to my developers, give them the endpoint, and they can start deploying all their bits to this new web platform. Got it, okay. okay. So pretty straightforward. Um, I won't create one here. I'll uh, show you what that looks like in another blade in a second. But if we come back up and just take a look at the one I have already provisioned, it's very straightforward and simplistic, but yet there's a lot of addi additional settings in here that need to be kind of uh, reviewed. Right away, coming into the web app, we can see we have our URL right here. It's going to tell me what plan, our pricing plan it's part of. Okay. Um, here is some of my FTP information and so more, and then my uh, subscription ID and all that kind of other stuff that you would normally see. A um, bunch of things we can work through here, like you know, deployment credentials, define new deployment credentials, so you know, push uh, your information up to the web app. Deployment slots, we can come in, we can actually create new slots. 
I cannot do it on this one because I'm using the shared plan. If I was using one of the premium ones, I'd be able to define my deployment slots right here. Okay. And then we have some deployment options as well. Choose my source configuration. It brings us back to what I was showing you in that uh, other configuration area. I could choose Git or an external repository in my case. Yeah, you mentioned that. Okay. Yep. And then coming back over some application settings, authentication, backups, a lot of really cool stuff in here. And then you even get down to you know scale up and scale out capabilities. So here's back to our pricing tiers. I'm part of that shared plan. If I had the other ones enabled, I don't have the web and workers deployed, but I could choose you know then some you of the larger them. ones. Okay. Yeah, okay. absolutely. And at that point, I have that scale up capability. And then the scale out functionality here as well. If I have more instances, just you know, go with my slider bar. How many instances <laughs> do I want? <laughs> that can be dangerous. Yep. <laughs> And then you come all the way down, just app service plans, the development tools themselves. So lots and lots of things in here for the, uh, you know, the administrators and users to actually configure and you know, make this thing really sweet. Okay, so you would say, you know, go review the documentation. Absolutely. First and foremost, because you want to get a good understanding of it. Maybe walk through this session again to kind of, you know, get you some, some insight into it. Um, and th that goes from both sides, so from the tenant as well as from the administrator, right? So the administrator's got to know how to set it up, but then the tenant also is going to need some help to make sure that they know what to do, you know, and, and kind of plan for it. Absolutely. Okay. Yep, very good point. Yep. So we can now also take a look at Visual Studio for this as well, ah, you okay. know, how to actually deploy into a uh, web app platform. Um, one example is coming up, or actually I should show you this first, where I've already authenticated here, so I went into my account manager. I can browse down to my um, Azure Stack subscription, and here is my web app that okay. I actually am using. But what if we wanted to build a new one as well? We can come in, just create a you know, brand new uh, website, as an example. I'm just going to choose like a .NET empty website. Do I want to save that? No, we'll just get rid of that and just go with a brand new solution here. And it's yeah, they've taken tremendous strides here to integrate Visual Studio with the Azure Stack, obviously as well as Azure platforms, sure. and just made this so simple. Now I will state, I am not a developer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> never have been, never will be. You don't play one on TV? <laughs> no. <laughs> um, but now I have my website already created essentially here, so I have a, a framework in place. Okay. I can come in, I can start modifying the web config, do all that kind of stuff, but as I said, I'm not a developer, so I'm going to you know, not get us in trouble here today. Right. So <laughs> Please don't. <laughs> so, but we can come in and choose deploy this. So if we want to go ahead and publish this web app, we can choose right onto the Azure app service right here. It's going to go and reconcile all my information back from my Azure Stack wow. environment. So it looks at seeing my general subscription right away. I can change this into the ASIC MTC subscription. Or in, um, but I'm going to keep it in our general one for this purpose. View, we want to do it into a resource group and search, but I want to create a brand new one here. So we'll create like you know, My Web App 2 or something okay. like that. So let's just call this uh, you know, website uh, Chicago, as an example. Into general, I want to create a new resource group right here. Just name it uh, Chicago also, um, right there and it's going to be part of this app service plan. So we can go ahead, create this web, you know, website Chicago. Momentarily, we're going to have a brand new website that we'll be able to give to our developer, and he can immediately start deploying his bits. Wow, that's pretty straightforward. Yeah, <laughs> remarkably. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. And so everything's staged for us now, it's ready, and all we got to do is publish. And here, this will be our URL um, as soon as this is finished. Okay, all right. And off it goes and does its job. It's, you know, Pretty straightforward. Yeah. yeah. So as you can see, yeah, it's a very easy platform to kind of adopt and get going with. Oh, look at that. And now, there we are, up and running already. Yeah, yeah. So nice. <laughs> and there's our brand new URL. So yeah, as I was saying, just very easy to get up and running. You know, just little to no maintenance, I would say, required. Right, right. It is, you know, as a fully managed service, essentially, that we're giving you with on top of Azure Stack. 
and just by updating your system, you're always ensured that you're going to be getting the latest bits and pieces from us as well from a maintenance standpoint. So it's uh, quite an easy service to adopt. And, but plan. Absolutely. Plan ahead. Plan ahead. Okay. Plan right. ahead. Excellent. Yep. Anything else you want to show? Uh, no, that's pretty much it, Kevin. Okay. Yeah, I think we're well, thank you, and thanks for joining us uh, for the Azure Stack App Service Resource Provider session. Uh, again, still a mouthful even after <laughs> the end of it. Uh, thanks, Alton. Thank Appreciate you very your much, time Kevin. Today, yep. And uh, see you in the next one. Thank you all.